I already told you it was very dangerous to discuss the Swiss military industrial complex, which I did in a series 10 days ago, to show you all how powerful and infiltrated they are everywhere. Well, only 10 days later, I got this letter here saying I have to go to prison on November the 10th for 20 days for telling about Switzerland in my videos and for expressing my opinion about the Swiss lies, crimes and terror on me and my family. Normally I don't even up their terror mail as you can see here. Most of them they are not opened up. I, you know, so I don't open up their terror mail anymore because after 17 long years of Swiss terror I just can't get my mind around it anymore. My mind totally blocks it out and, I, and even if I try and read it it just doesn't enter my senses. I can read it 10 times and it doesn't get in, you know. It has me totally traumatized as 17 years of total Swiss Nazi terror. It's just too long to bear for a human being, especially if you haven't done anything wrong and everything based upon Swiss lies and Swiss hatred. And 17 long years of Swiss terror has preoccupied my mind day and night, filling every aspect of my daily life with plain Swiss Nazi terror. Can you imagine? But this time it said Vollzug, meaning prison on the outside. So I had Gabriel from Spain read it for me. The Swiss are the most wicked people on earth and they really believe in their crimes against humanity. Most crimes people do are out of poverty, heartbreak or human misery. But not these Swiss. They're out to hurt other people just because they feel so or because they don't agree with someone else's opinion or out of a different uh, racial features. It's the same with their lies. There are many different sorts of lies. People lie about or out of fear, to avoid punishment, to gain material wealth in business or to show off out of false pride. But rarely people lie to hurt others and even believe in it and therefore being able to execute their evil in such a refined and organized way under the cover of clean Swiss neutrality. And this sort of lie is the very case in Switzerland. And one of the differences, differences they inhibit in comparison with the rest of us and the rest of humanity. Oh, here it is. I just tried to document it. Uh, complete Swiss liar. Lies. You know, it's complete terror. I haven't been out for three and a half years. I never go out. So they can't grab me, so they're doing it this way, you know. So I have to pay 1300 Swiss francs, otherwise I go to prison for 20 days. Strafmaß, 20 days. For nothing. I didn't do anything. I get aggressed by a cop and I try to ask help on YouTube and document it. But oh, Swissy doesn't like that, you know. They hide everything under the carpet. So, this is real serious. This is. They are evil people. Very bad. Extremely evil. They have been doing this for. 17 long years. Every day and night for 17 years. You know, I've been doing this. I've been living under their terror. So, please try to uh, copy my videos and uh, so we all know what this place is about. So, you know, they try to censor my videos and that's what it is about. And it's, it's only 10 days ago 
that I made that video on um, about the uh, Swiss industrial military complex. I know this, you know, they're very, very powerful. In this, money, in this country, it's all about money and power. A man or a person is not equal on the law. If you're rich, you know, you can do everything here. So you can see, this is on September 3rd, or September 22nd, it says here. Uh, Mr. Dellenbach. Swiss criminals. Most wicked people on earth. So I'll show you again. It says Monday, November the 10th, 2014. I have to go in. This, this is the torture prison. Regionalgefängnis Bern, Amthaus. This is where they already tortured me. I'm not a criminal. I've never done anything in my life. I'm not a criminal. Do you hear me, Swissy? I'm not a criminal, but you are. And I've proved it in my videos that you are a bunch of criminals, Swissy. Yeah, this is from a lawyer who doesn't do anything. So they sort of pretend to be a civil place, like, you know. And this is what they, I should have done, you know. It's about, here yeah, it says, it's about my YouTube videos. Yeah. On YouTube. Hatze, Fratze, Gure. This is what they don't want. And because of my videos, I go to prison. First I get aggressed and hit, and a cop who lies something together. And if I dare to talk about it, I go to prison. Here it says, Strafbefehl, Nazi Switzerland. You see, with a number, September the 17th, it's going on now. What can I do? And this is going on, folks, this is going on for 17 years. So, don't lose my videos, copy them, distribute them, download them, burn them in DVDs, don't make them get lost, because I'm onto something here about the Ku Klux Klan, they don't want me to, from Switzerland, they don't want me to say this, you know, that's why I go to, to prison, yeah, just punch pause, this is the nearest I get. You just have to, you know, take it all, you know, and, and get, have yourself terrorized by the homies here. And don't open your mouth. That's all I did. I let myself hit by the cop. I only open my mouth. I say, I say it's not good that you lie. Here's some more on the other side. This is side number two. Here it says... So I have to pay the cop two months later. He got killed because he was so dangerous and so aggressive. He got killed in self-defense by a, another Swiss person. And now me, the foreigner, they want to make me responsible for it. And I have to pay 7,000 Swiss francs, 7,400. Because the foreigner is always responsible in Switzerland for everything. Even if a Swiss did it, you know, this is Switzerland, you see. It's always the foreigner responsible for everything. And the guy who shot the cop, well, they murdered him in prison. There was uh, Roger, Roger Funkhauser. They murdered him just before his uh, appeal case. And they don't want any appeal cases here. Then it gets very dangerous. So they want me the foreigner, the immigrant, to make me responsible for the death uh, of their, of, of her husband, you say, Regula Kuni, that's the, the woman, and the, the children. I'm responsible for the death of, of the cop, you see, because I'm a foreigner. That's how it is in Switzerland, you know. And these people are so full of hatred, you know, they don't care a lot you know, about it, that my family and my small young children are being terrorized by them. They only think like, oh, we, the poor Swiss, you know, we are so poor and so neutral and so clean, you know, 
They only think about money and about themselves. And the foreigner has to go to prison. And this lawyer does not do a damn thing. The Swiss are beyond doubt the most wicked people on earth. And they've always gotten away with it so far. So they know they can do what they want as the Swiss Templars give the orders anyway to that worldwide web of Freemasons of Swiss descent all over the world in all key positions. In fact, we should put warning shields around Switzerland at all border passages saying, you're leaving international laws area. Here we don't abide any human law. So people won't fall for their clean neutrality trap in disguise of this dictatorship wrapped in nice milk chocolate. Yes, yeah, Switzerland is a dictatorship wrapped in nice milk chocolate. So in these 20 days prison for expressing my opinion, they will force me to delete my videos. They will constantly interrogate me, threaten me and finally kill me. As the Swiss Nazi police and the fascist judiciary have already announced. I know those Swiss prisons, how they shout, swear, threaten and provoke you without end, letting loose their inhibited natural-born Swiss aggressions when they can and when they're allowed to. Just like in the Second World War with the concentration camps. So please, don't let my efforts be in vain and you all copy, save, download and burn my videos on DVDs. Out of my pain I served you a face and a name of the real tormentors of mankind. So this is it. This is the end. And I wish you all the best. What can I do? I feel old and broken and I cannot run because I have no passport. I cannot fight because I'm alone and I have a family and children. I can just be dragged to the slaughterhouse like a Jew being exterminated. And there's nothing you can do about it. Let my videos be my ultimate revenge on this Swiss Nazi people. I will curse them. I curse them every single day. For 1300 Swiss francs I could buy myself out of prison. But they know I have no money at all and no income. And even if somebody uh, would pay for me... I re I'd refuse categorically. I showed you the list of people who got murdered and suicided in Swiss prisons, like they did with Austrian Wolfgang Umfogel, who got suicided for selling CDs about tax fraud, and even his money got confiscated and stolen by the Swiss Nazi authorities. Oh, they love money in Octogon, money über alles. The sound of money. So first they murdered this man. In two weeks time he wanted to sell banking CDs to Germany, France and the United States because of uh, tax evasion. And the, uh, the Swiss Secret Service, the SSS, they caught him and in only two weeks time he got suicided. And then I wrote this article. I, I, I videotaped it. I put it on YouTube in my channel. So I contacted the biggest uh, Austrian newspaper and they, um, they also said that they, the man got suicided and they wrote his name in it so they sent me an anti-terrorist squad. Um, so now they, that was just a few months ago they even stole his money. 2.5 2 million euros that the German authorities they uh, paid out to Wolfgang Umfogel and they just stole it, you know, the Swiss steal everything. It's the sound of money, it's not the sound of music, there's no music here. So, sort of, I got implicated in this affair because I helped writing the, uh, an article in a foreign newspaper. And then it gets very dangerous, you know, with these Swiss assassins. Oh yes, they're going to do me, they promised me to kill me. And I have witnesses that don't even listen to it, and they will do it. So I guess my time is up. Eh? 
This video here shows Hans Rudolf Kuni, who in 2011 aggressed me and under orders lied things together to get me, a foreigner and an immigrant, into prison. So I videotaped the corrupt cop to save the evidence. And the Swiss absolutely want me to take the evidence off the internet, for which they also will put me in prison. And after user Marino Delfino here analyzed the video, it came out the dirty cop had black alien eyes and a UFO backup hovering overhead. So it's obvious that my lens caught something too much, which they want to hide from the public. So they used the Swiss Nazi Justice Department to blackmail me in a highly criminal way and for which I now go to prison for, where they will have total control over me for 20 days and will most likely lie some more things together, as this bloke here did, while I'm inside, uh, like to send me into a psychiatrical ward for the rest of my days. And they already tried that. Just as Swiss cop Hans, Hans Rudolf Kuni was a damn corrupt liar. Thank God he's dead now because someone shot the evil cop dead two months after. So here you can see this thing uh, hovering uh, ab above our heads. I, I don't know what it is. I didn't see it at the moment. But my lens caught it. The guy, he had absolutely dark eyes. So this is the very first video on my channel Gatsefrats, or the second, where you can see the original footage. Uh, he has black eyes. This is no uh, Photoshop or anything. We don't do these sort of things. You know, these guys, they Photoshop and, uh, you know, here's my wife actually. Uh, she, she, was a, she was a witness and so were my children. And uh, they, the Swiss are a bunch of wicked liars. They lie against humanity and they just lie things together to put an immigrant in prison. And they are so cold and, and heartless uh, and so organized and, and so incredibly organized, you know. Uh, there really is an alien, um, um, an alien agenda here and we can see it and they want to cover this up. And this is why I have to go to prison. So this is on Marino Delfino. Go and have a, go and have a look at it. Um, he's a very good guy. He's from England, and he uh, he did a very good job here. Um, I, I'm very glad to know him, Marino Delfino. Good man. The last three and a half years, I haven't gone out of the house in Switzerland alone anymore, which has taken a very bad impact on my health. Sometimes I didn't didn't go out like for two months. And so they couldn't really get me during this time. So now they just sentence me to prison because of nothing in order to get me where they want me to. So here you can see the evil cop again with the black eyes. And go and have a look at the first video on my channel. He really has these black eyes and there's really a weird thing hovering over, which you can also see in the newspaper article about this, what happened. The Swiss are the most wicked people I know. They are behind the Second World War and the First World War, behind everything, believe me, and the bank, the banking uh, chaos and everything. They did it. So everyone copy the video of the, uh, the corrupt, aggressive alien cop. Also the one of um, Marina Delfino and my first one. And copy my other videos. Don't you know, see to it, they don't get lost. And maybe somebody can help my, uh, my wife and children. Uh, because there's important evidence on it, the video with the cop. These Swiss are not really human and a menace to humanity. And here the images show that evil cop with black alien eyes with a UFO above and Swiss are using that 50 francs Reptilian money, as you can see here. I have about one month left, maybe. And funny enough, November the 10th is the end of World War I. Now celebrated, well, the beginning, uh, 100 years ago. The next day, on the 11th, is the armistice. 
as these guys are into numbers and are called rituals, you know, where they celebrate the death of nine million soldiers and 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 the uh, the Spanish flu coming afterwards with another fifty million dead before going for the final kill. I'll try to make some more videos before the deadline, and if not, don't forget me and make it known what these wicked Swissies did. I'm Regina Loy. I'm the wife from Sean Ross and mother uh, for our children. I'm working as a nurse and a naturopath. I just try to tell you in a few words how my uh, experience are with during the time where I live with Sean. My husband is a nice, lovely person. He tried to give the world answers how the things turn how they do. But with this try to became a lot of but with this try he became a lot of stones and rocks of his way. These rocks and stones makes him difficult to live how he feels to. The situation now is really heavy for all of us in this family. The situation with the policemen for more than three years have found now the top. They needed all this time for change to find how they can change the lie into a, one of the thousands of laws. But one thing has never changed. It is a lie. My man is not a criminal person. I know it because I would never stay with him such a long time if it would be another way around. All in, in this past time, the association done a lot with much energy to put him out. Put, but what have they done for helping, for finding his place in this association? We would like just to live together as a family because we need him. Yeah, you said they started to terrorize me because of the... Um, what, can you tell it by yourself now? You said you would? It's just that the point uh, on this time for more than three years what, where the policemen ar arrested us. Um, he was more than a half an hour in, in his car. So that was on April the 8th, 2011, 11 hours and 40 minutes, so about half past 11 in the morning, in Bergdorf. Yeah. He stays a long time in his car and when he came out he, he, he would be changed. He, um, he tried to take your camera away, he, would, uh, he changed to be ag aggressive and he tried to hit you and hit you. And all because nothing, because you, you was really really kind before, you try, you say hello to the police officer, you shake him the hand, and so on, and he just reagate, re he just changed because maybe he became his order, how they have to do, after he, t um, he came out of his car. Yeah, he hit you. Did he lie? Yeah, he lied because he, he's, uh, he told after that you would be aggressive and so on because, but the other way around, what the reason he, he would be aggressive, not you. So at the moment when, when you were there, did he lie too? I mean, uh, he, he said that. He said, you're going to have a complaint for threatening me. Is, is that a lie? Did he lie? I mean, wasn't it the other way around? He threatened me? Yeah, sure. Because you, you, you were friendly, you were um, correct. So he pushed me, he hit me, and what did I do? Yeah. You say hello and you shake him I, I didn't do anything, no. didn't I? No. That's why... I didn't defend myself. I, I had to... Do that. Have myself hit by these yeah. aggressive cops, eh? That's why I told you they need more than three years to change a lie or, or to, try, uh, to try to change yeah. a lie. So that was Hans Rudolf Kühne and the other one was Erika Kunz. Yeah. Okay, so you just said that the... Um, 
Uh, they're doing this because I'm telling the world about the uh, on YouTube about things, but that's only the last four years I've been on YouTube, and actually I've been on YouTube because uh, because of this Swiss terror. I started to think, and um, I am asking for help, but there is no help. You get only more terror if you open up your mouth, and uh, that's why I started it. So we have been together for 15 years, so that leaves open another 11 years. Did they terrorize me in this time? Did they put yeah. me in prison? They don't help you, they put you out wherever they can. Yeah, so the reason is not that I do my YouTube videos, they oh. already did it before. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so the policemen, they are liars. Yeah. They just lied. You were there, you heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why do you think, you're, sorry, you already told me, uh, they're doing this to, to put me as an immigrant, to put me away in prison? Mm -hmm. uh, are they terrorizing your whole family? I mean, do you need me here? Yeah, that's why I told, we need you to stay, that you can stay with us, because when I'm working, you look after the little child, and that's really, um, that's really, uh, yeah. You have to stay here because you have you, you are part of us. You're part of this family. So they're not just terrorizing me, but they're terrorizing the whole family. No, because I, I see how, how you have to live, how you feel and so on. That's why they terrorize the whole family. Yeah. No. Uh, can I just go outside and walk around and go and play some soccer with the boys or...? No, you have... Yeah, that's... I think it's not it's not possible at the moment. Yeah, so I've, I've been like a prisoner here for three and a half years then. Yeah. Yeah, is there anything else you'd like to say here? No. You want to ask for help because the, the, the system here in Switzerland doesn't work apparently. Mm. So we got only YouTube left, you know, and the transparency. You want to ask for help for somebody else because here there are a bunch of liars. If it give, gives help, it yeah, would be a really, really emergency. Yeah? So this is my son, he's almost, uh, my younger son, he's almost uh, 13 years old. Um, can you tell me what your name is? Riva. And how old are you? Twelve years. Uh, do you understand English? Yes. Yeah, so he's having English in school. So you remember on April the 8th, 2011 at 11 hours and 40 minutes, so half past 11 roughly, in Bergdorf. Um, did the policeman, did he, did he hit me? Yes. Was he aggressive? Yes. Um, did you see him going into his car and going on and, and being on the telephone for about half an hour? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have still any uh, confidence in the police? Um, no, wait a minute. Um, it's maybe a bit complicated. Yeah, so, um, do you still have any confidence in the Swiss police? No. Do you want, for, do you want to ask for help here to the international community so the Swiss terror will stop? Yes. Okay. Well, his English is he's just learning, so... So this is my eldest son here, the one I can still see, he's living with us, he's 14 years old and a half, he's about, he's more than six feet tall, wow, um, his name is, uh, well, what is your name? Kellyan. Okay, let's say Celtic name, uh, how old are you? 14 years old. Yeah, and a half, Yeah. And doesn't half. matter. Yeah. 
um, what happened on the day what how can you remember that the day like three and a half years ago on August, on April the 8th 2011 at about half past 11 in the morning when with the two policemen did they uh, did they hit me or, the, yes. or did, did the one hit me there yeah they do was he aggressive where uh, how did I um, behave did I say Z was I polite to him yes that's true uh, did I uh, did I shake his hands yeah also uh, then he went into the car what did he do in the car um, they call and became the spoke yeah yeah so he was on the telephone in the car exactly how long was he in the car how um, long? 40 minutes mm -hmm. could be Maybe, yeah. half an hour 40 minutes yeah and all this time uh, what did we have to do what did you you know wait in the car yeah, yeah. was it hot where yeah and um, was mommy pregnant was she having the baby yeah yeah they, and the police they didn't care about this yeah yeah um, so this was the policeman, a very aggressive and dangerous lying cop. His name was Hans Rudolf Kuni. It's uh, thank God he's dead, so he can't hurt any more people. And the other one was Erika Kunz. And this one should be in prison. Um, so did the policeman? Did he lie or did? Where lie? Yeah. Any lie? Yeah. Uh, later on. Uh, we got arrested for nothing another time in the when was that at the petrol station um, 28th of December to 2011 yeah yeah okay um, <coughs> were they aggressive as well yeah aggressive did they have what were they showing what would they have uh, carrying um, they want to um, see my um, identify card and they um, walk around with a um, picture of my father. Yeah, you see I'm not a criminal, yeah. just for political reasons, they want to hang on something to me and they're walking around with my picture, you know, the drug dealers, the, the Swiss banksters, they don't do anything and the, ch and the Swiss child molesters, but you know, for political reasons. Uh, Swissy, he's uh, you know walking around with my picture, so uh, I I did I decided not to go out anymore. You know, well they were aggressive. You know, like you know I had to take all my, uh, but not as aggressive as uh, Hans Rudolf Kuni who was hitting me and all this. But anyway, they tried to provoke me, and they say like, um, are you on drugs or something? You know. Well, I never used any drugs in my life, and they know it very well, you know. Before the torture, I never even drank any alcohol. Yeah. So, um, do you still have any um, confidence in the police? No, not more. No? Why? They are lie. Mm hmm And they are, yeah, aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, all your life, you're now 14 years and a half, you lived under this Swiss uh, terror, is that right? That's right. Yeah. So we cannot go and go out and play some soccer, you know. Yeah. Uh, does how, how do you feel this? How do you live with this? It's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stress. Right? Stress. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I know it's difficult because uh, you've got the braces. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Probably. And English is not your native language, right? Eh? That's true, yeah. Yeah, but you're doing fine. Mm. Uh, do you want to ask for help? Somebody helps, you know, because the Swiss system doesn't work. Well, it works, but, you know, not honestly, it, it, it works for them. But do you want to ask help on YouTube if somebody help, you know, stop this terror? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Stop okay. this terror. Mm -hmm. Okay.
This is Alvina. It's my daughter. She's um, two and a half years old. Well, she's going to be three soon. Alvina? Hello. <laughs> and um, while well, you hear all the noise, there, there's construction all over. There's construction. There's a construction. You can hear them. Sometimes it's so bad, you know, we can't even go out. There's a crane here. They're working on the house there. Up here. And there's a big, a big construction site here behind. I'll show it to you. So sometimes, you know, we cannot even go out at all because it's just too noisy. And because, because of the Swiss police terror, uh, we are not allowed to go and have a little walk because the police will come immediately as they have already done like last year I think it was November the 28th that was the first time in many years that I went out and immediately the police came with their guns and everything they just forced themselves into the house so I put this here so so they can't, you know, like storm in with their cars and endanger my little girl here. And with their guns drawn and put some guns on my head as I already done before. Just based upon lies. No reason at all. So we're living like, you know, this is like World War II, you know, it's she's like little Anna Frank. Little Anne Frank in Switzerland and Nazism in Switzerland oh man it's blossoming here yes it is they're building three concentration camps and uh, if you open up your mouth about it they send an anti-terrorist squad I don't know where the anti is actually it's just a terrorist squad a plain terrorist squad they've done it to me in 2011 since then it's it's almost four years I've been under house arrest, you know, because they just lie things together, you know, for the criminal to lie the the, uh, the criminal statistic on immigrants and foreigners like myself, you know, up in the air, so they can achieve more laws in Parliament. Actually, the word Parliament is French, Parlement, and that means parler, parler. That means to talk. Mont is for mentir, and that means to lie. A parliament is talk and lie. And especially in Switzerland it's the case. You know, damn liar politicians. So, that's my little Anne Frank. My little girl Alvina, which is a Germanic name. Which means the friend of the elves. My two boys have Celtic names. Kilian and Riwan. Well, they have been living their whole lives under Swiss Nazi terror. Yeah, they're quite fed up with it. They know how the Swiss police, how they're a bunch of liars and crooks, aggressive. Um, and uh, they will start opening, opening up their mouth about it. And they tell the truth. And as I put in my last film, on Gure, Auschwitz made in Switzerland. They got their dirty little fingers in everything, you know, under that Swiss neutrality swindle smile. So you can hear, you know, what a what a noise it is here. So me and my little girl Anne Frank. You know. Sometimes we can't even go outside at all. due to the Swiss Nazi terror. I would go and out and go out and have a stroll, but then the neighbors will call the police as they you know as they do. And uh, 
then they come with all their violence and try to lie something together, you know, to put the immigrant in prison. Alvina? Hello? Today, October 25th, 2014, it was even in the Swiss newspapers that Swissy wants to completely abolish international rights and human rights precisely in conjunction with the three Swiss concentration camps they have built. Simultaneously with Swiss Nazi Ebola at the same time, Swiss banks financing the Islamic State in Wahhabi Qatar and actually occupying all key positions in the USA by the Swiss Octagon Police Blue Army gunning down Americans with Swiss Sieg Sauer weapons. This will open all doors for Swissy to officially torture and kill immigrants in their newly built concentration camps and apply the sheriff's, sheriff's law only. A thing they've been doing already in their typical sly Swiss hiding motors. So here's the newspaper's witness account on how the Swiss are trying to legalize their crimes against humanity, which until now they just hid while smiling like some serial killer. And it's a shame to be driven by terror to the internet's transparency and ask for help by presenting oneself and family like in a shop window. Because the system of Switzerland works like a corrupt fascist mafia. And due to the very high rate of innocent people getting suicided in the Swiss prisons, I would like to state one more time that I have no suicidal thoughts no depressions, no intentions to aggress or hurt anyone else, that I take no drugs, pills or medications and never have, and have no need for any psychiatry on Swiss Nazi orders. I have about one month left maybe, and funny enough, November the 10th is the end of World War I, now celebrated, well the beginning, uh, 100 years ago. The next day, on the 11th, is the armistice, as these guys are into numbers and occult rituals, you know, where they celebrate the death of 9 million soldiers and, and, and the, uh, the Spanish flu coming afterwards with another 50 million dead, before going for the final kill. I'll try to make some more videos before the deadline, and if not, don't forget me and make it known what these wicked Swissies did. So this here is just another warning of these Swiss terrorists. And as the uh, arrest of the um, anti-terrorist squad was, and they did even worse things they did, the Swiss. It's really murder incorporated. It is a warning and the murder threats I'm receiving of the Swiss police and the Swiss Justice Department. What will happen next? So together with the cat, what they, uh, they chopped off his leg. Uh, here was another warning they gave me last year. This was from the biggest Swiss newspaper, the article about how they arrested me with an anti-terrorist squad. They put three guns on my head, they put a, um, a bandage over my head as in a uh, rendition of the CIA like. Uh, there were armed uh, men all over the place, shouts, threats, uh, handcuffs, foot cuffs. And uh, later on they threatened, they, I got murder threats, you know, so that, that I shouldn't talk about Switzerland on the internet. Uh, so, 
and they did far more worse, which I'm going to tell you about in the next vid. Um, I don't know what they're going to do next, but uh, they're apparently going to make true their uh, their threats and uh, trying to uh, to uh, what to do what they um, what they said. Well, this is Switzerland. For no reason at all, there was a cop who hit me for no reason at all. So I put them on the internet, and then they send an anti-terrorist squad. That's what they did. There was a warning. You can read all about it. Here. This is, was in the biggest Swiss newspaper. Okay. Yeah. The octagon in octagon in Bern, Switzerland, the home of the devil. Base of the Nazis. Do we need to wait a ballistic? I get it. Get it. Do I have my wife here? Do I have my wife here? Are you ready? Yes. Hoe zeg ik het Ja, is goed, Kate, yes. Ja, ja, dat kun je er niet eens naar komen. Ja, ja, verschwind. Verschwind jetzt. Alle Schweizer weg. Hop. Ja, alle Schweizer weg. Was willst du noch sagen? Was willst du sagen? Hä? Was willst du noch sagen? Gar nicht. Das ist alles die. Ja, gar nicht. Sag es denn. Alle Schweizer weg, kann ich sagen. Ja, verschwind jetzt. Gleichfalls. Das ist gut, ja. Was bin ich, was flippt, was mache ich? Sie sind nicht als Mieter hier. Ja, und? Ja. Und weiter? Und wenn Sie Probleme machen, fliegen Sie. Ich mache keine Probleme. Moll. Das sind hier drei kleine Kinder und da wird hier nichts gefeilt und geschweißt. Haben Sie es verstanden? Die Kinder müssen Die haben nicht Ferien. rauskommen. Die können aus der Tür, also, das ist die Haustür. Ich, äh, Sie meinen, unsere Kinder dürfen nicht raus. Mach jetzt das weg. So this is the guy, so he just hit me and uh, they are hoping I will hit them back, but I won't, because the Swiss, the Swiss are always right, then they come with the police and then they say the foreigner was aggressive, well you just all saw that I'm not aggressive. And he starts swearing, he starts to swear himself, to force himself inside the door and he's telling us we cannot come out of the door. Look, and this is his car, this is his car number. This is Switzerland. Look at them. They're hoping I will hit them back, but I won't. I won't. There's another one. Look, they're getting organized. Look at it. Look. Everywhere. Everywhere. Look at it. He's, he's threatening with problems. Did you hear this? Look at it. Well, I better go in. Well, I've got you on camera, mate. Your camera. So in Switzerland, they just come and ring at the door and um, they just hit you one. I didn't even go out of the door. And if you hit them back, they call up the police, you know. They just call up the police. They're very organized. So I must just accept it. And another aggression. And another one. And another one. And another one. Going on for 16 years, you know. So now the cops probably coming because I didn't do anything. In Octogon, Switzerland, tens of thousands of asylum seekers have disappeared and vanished into thin air. And only in the year 2012, 3,000 vanished. 
seeing the reality and Switzerland collaboration with the Nazis and even financing the Nazis and giving them Red Cross passports to escape through the Red Line to Argentina and Spain. It must be assumed that the Swiss murdered all these refugees and burned their bodies as in Auschwitz. Or does anyone think that thousands of refugees just left Switzerland after having paid enormous sums for their dangerous and long voyage into the promised land. No, not really, did they now? And in Switzerland it is impossible for an immigrant to hide or stay low because the Swiss survey all immigrants, call up the police all the time and where you can't live anonymously as in Paris for instance. So, though these guys are definitely not in Switzerland anymore, or at least not alive. With all those incessant ID controls on immigrants by the Swiss Nazi police and Swiss neighbours keep an eye on everything what's going on. I already gave you the proofs of how the Swiss are building three large concentration camps. They show all immigrants like uh, in the streets with, uh, as all sorts of animals and of tortured detention centers in Switzerland where many immigrants were murdered and how the Swiss Nazi police lies to put immigrants in prison upon orders by the Swiss Nazi justice department. The police arrest you for nothing, takes you in the car and then people just disappear. This happened to tens of thousands and they tried it with me too. So this was in the newspaper yesterday, uh, August the uh, 19th, in this newspaper here, as you can read here, August 19th, 2013. And here you can read the whole story if you like. And if you don't understand German, just look at the numbers of how many people just disappeared in a country where nobody can disappear. And certainly not tens of thousands. They know everything. They control everything here. The neighbours, the, the authorities, everything. It's unbelievable. Yesterday, on August 19th, 2013, several Swiss ran over an Egyptian refugee on the Swiss motorway, where they're doing 130 kilometres an hour. The man probably ran for his life trying to get away from abduction by a Swiss murder squad. Uh, from Octogon. The young man died, of course, and the Swiss he keeps silent and pretend to know nothing, as usual. I mean, you don't run on a high-speed motorway in the dark unless you have, you have to, because you're very frightened of something and someone chasing you. Octogon and the Swiss are masters in perfect crime and are incredible in keeping tight through the Swiss Omerta of the world's greatest crime syndicate. So here you can see the whole article that was yesterday. Another one gone. So in order to avoid uncontrollable events like on the motorway they even force certain immigrants to live in bunkers high up in the Alps miles away from the nearest village where nobody can see what happens and where it's much easier to have them disappear with nearby incineration facilities where no one will smell a thing so again this was in the newspaper when was that And, um, well, these are the type of Swiss Nazis who, uh, I mean, look at them. He looks very innocent, doesn't he? He uh, looks a bit like Teflon Tony, doesn't he? But they're not innocent. Oh, no. Oh, no. So here you can read the proofs about the Swiss uh, torture detention facilities where it's green. They, it's uh, there's talk about the uh, the torture of being of putting people in cells where there's no not enough oxygen being the O2T torture 
Um, as in waterboarding. Even worse. So, this is how they make people leave Switzerland. And if they don't want, well, they find other ways to do it. By terror and um, by plainly murdering them. Code O2T is the deprivation of oxygen to a near life threatening degree which is the easiest to regulate in order to create slow death lift. So I'll just punch pause if you want to read it. There you go. Just punch pause. This is what they're doing in Switzerland. The home of the Templars, Octagon. Switzerland, Octagon, their business is death.
This is how the Swiss got rid of hundreds of immigrants by deliberately suiciding them with code O2T in especially developed Swiss torture detention centers. Maybe they even had thousands disappear this way. The Swiss are very secretive about it. There are people that can keep secrets very well while smiling to the world and misleading humanity about their real intentions. Khaled Abu Zariva, Palestinian, murdered by the Swiss authorities through code O2T on March 3rd, 1999. Samson Chukwu, Nigerian, murdered by the Swiss authorities through code O2T on May 1st, 2001. Abdi Daoud, Somalian, March 23, 2008. Murdered by the Swiss authorities through code O2T in a Swiss torture detention center. I went to his funeral in Zurich. Joseph Ndukaku Chiakwa, Nigerian. Murdered by the Swiss authorities through code O2T in a Swiss torture detention center on March 17, 2010. Wolfgang Umfogel, Austrian, uh, murdered in the Swiss, murdered by the Swiss authorities through code O2T in a Swiss torture detention center on September the 29th, 2010. Uh, Wolfgang Umfogel, he wanted to sell or give the US and Germany um, uh, banking CDs on tax evasion havens and Switzerland. Criminal banksters, you see. So the Swiss um, Secret Service, they um, they snatched him and in only two weeks time they suicided him through code O2T. They tortured him in the torture detention center of Amthaus Bern where the maker of this video got tortured as well during five months and his hair turned grey in five months time only he knew that you use a, a human the human organism uses less oxygen if you sleep so that's what the maker of the vid did dead Getchai, Albanian murdered by the Swiss authorities in a Swiss torture detention center through code O2T on November 19th, 2010. Here with his daughter. His daughter got raped by a Swiss pedophile teacher, so Mr. Getchai went to the police, who told him that foreigners shouldn't go to the Swiss police. Then he got his gun and solved the problem himself by putting some 9mm slugs into the Swiss pedophile. Then he escaped to Albania and the Swiss pulled all diplomatic strings for over 10 years to get him back. Only so the Swiss vendetta could murder him. In order to eradicate all evidence, the Swiss officially kidnapped his daughter, Bezarta, already in 1991 and had Bezarta disappear forever. I went to his funeral where his son told me that he couldn't breathe his father just before he got suicided. Because of 17 years of Swiss Nazi terror, my mind automatically tries to defend me from more of it and entirely blocks out the continents of their terror mail. So I didn't see it at first, but when I showed the video to someone while looking on the, at the screen, it got another dimension. And then I saw it. Above the logo of the Swiss bear of the Swiss authorities, there is a crown over it. That means none other that the aristocracy is ruling. As the Templars who founded Switzerland in 1291, are of aristocratic descent indeed. Switzerland is not a monarchy and never was 
and they constantly brag about their direct democracy and all the privileges they have compared to the rest of the world. So why is there a royal crown on the key positions ruling the country, if it was a people's republic? Well, Switzerland is so mixed with the nobility through the Prime Noctus, or First Right, see my other videos about that, that all Swiss have the pharaonic gene, like recently genetically analysed. Switzerland is, in fact, that pharaonic breeding ground and the royal nest, where all royals come and study like in Geneva, a Swiss international school, or a Swiss elite boarding school. And by the way, this is Pharaoh's immaculate conception, spreading the royal bloodline through the Prime Noctus, and then immaculately liberating the young girl in the morning after a perfectly clean immaculate bath washed and tidied her clothes and an, an immaculate royal breakfast thus immaculately returning to her newly wed husband just like the entire immaculate clean and neutral Switzerland with their nobility's crown over the bear in that unholy, evil alliance of the crown with the bear standing for European. Thus apprehending Pharaoh's disgust, like doing the prime noctus with that European bitch smelling like a bear, before kicking the bear out with an immaculate aura around her and inside her, as if nothing really ever happened at all, just an immaculate return from the castle. Here you can see the two lions, the symbol of the the, uh, the, 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 uh, the nobility and the pharaonic uh, royal dignity of the pharaohs with the crown. <laughs> this is the aristocracy ruling. Right? And here it says 17, 70. And here you can see pharaohs, knights of the aristocracy. It's still the, 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 it's still the same lineage. Nothing has changed, you know. That's why there's a crown overhead. These are the ones, you know, like lying things together to put me in prison, who have terrorized me for 17 years, who make murder threats. They are the knights of the Middle Ages, you know. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. It's the same pharaonic lineage. And they are, they are not full-blooded full, full -blooded pharaohs, these ones here, otherwise they would be the king. But they have a very large percentage, more than the average people. The crown of Switzerland. Islamic State is not the enemy. But that is the enemy, the Royal Templars of Octogon, Switzerland. Immaculate Switzerland and the Swiss crown rule the world. So it's the high security prison they put me in it. And this is the first time I see it. There's a crown on it. And a bear. So that means the aristocracy is ruling here. And it is, in fact, a, an, a, an ancient monastery. This here. Oh, no, a, um, a castle, sorry. And that's for. These people will never come out. The Swiss, they'll keep them forever, you know, for experiments and things like this. So the aristocracy, they're quite sly. This way, you know, this is. A cell they can rent it more expensive than the most expensive hotel suite well, that was my cell the second from the from the top I'm not even a criminal I refuse I was a, I'm a pro political criminal a political uh, prisoner yeah here yeah, they're probably looking at me so this is the 
the crown of the aristocracy. I mean, they're ruling. They're ruling over Bern. They're the ones, eh? They, they've teamed up with the Swiss. The Swiss are the killers for the aristocracy all over Europe. The SS, everything. I mean, look at the symbols. They don't lie. Oh, look. There's a cobra. Oh, they got a lot of money here. For, what is it? A Ford Cobra or what is it? Yeah. So this is called the Emmental. They're, what, they're, they're the worst type of Swiss you can get, really. Here they have, they have been having children slaves, even their own children, until 1989. And they are the ones who live still living in the caves here. Swiss cave dwellers. The crown of the bear. The bees at uh, seven crowns and uh, ten heads. Like in uh, the Revelation of John. Well, that's here. This is what John saw. So I'm walking here with Gabriel, the Spanish guy. It's quite narrow. And Switzerland has seven heads of state who divide ten ministries among themselves. The crown of Bern, of the beast. And here they put a lot of innocent people, just for political reasons. So the uh, Swiss extreme rightist party, the SVP Nazi party, they can just say, well, all the criminals, they, all the, the foreigners, the immigrants are criminals. And, it looks like an octagon. There's the old castle. As there's the crown. Looks like a Swiss Nazi hiding place. The home of evil, where they rule the world, the crown of burn, the bear. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil, eh? They hide everything here. Hello, I'm here with uh, Sean Hatzefratz uh, in Switzerland. Um, I'm visiting him and uh, I'm telling him my story. I listened to his uh, story uh, on YouTube and uh, we're exchanging our knowledge and our, um, our history. <laughs> Experience. Our experience. And uh, I'm very positively uh, surprised by his uh, friendly uh, personality. And uh, I we talked very much, and maybe I can uh, uh, confirm some. Uh, Many, many of his uh, of his points and views. Uh, it's a reality in Switzerland that uh, um, men, uh, male persons, are discriminated because of uh, the sex, and uh, children are indeed uh, uh, hostages for uh, uh, financial purposes. 
and <coughs> I made this uh, same experience. Uh, my ex-partner uh, uh, was uh, uh, preferred in every way by the uh, institutions and uh, lawyers and uh, also the judges in Switzerland. <laughs> well, no, that, that's not funny because it's a poor story, but uh, of course we have to survive uh, these uh, difficult situations. There are, uh, there are a lot of uh, um, persons which preferred not to live anymore or uh, just uh, uh, had a psych psychedelic uh, psychological uh, damage and uh, I know a few of them and uh, but uh, it's it's uh, much easier to uh, to work with it uh, if, if, if you know uh, good people like like Sean and uh, I hope we can uh, we can start some I hope we can we can start some uh, projects or uh, cooperations uh, cooperation together. I would like to to uh, help in administrative uh, work uh, and where where I'm able to to help. Uh, so your your ancestry is Spanish. Yes. Your father and mother. Both, yes. And this makes it too that you're being terrorized by the Swiss authorities. Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah? Yeah. So they want to take your child away? Yes. Yeah, he's four years old, eh? Yes, but, but I have to say it's not... Th and they send you to a psychiatrist? Exactly. You have no problems at all, psychological, but they just send you there so they can terrorize you? Exactly. Uh, they, they, the Swiss, they say to... All foreigners, immigrants, well, they're crazy, and we Swiss, we are, we are the best, and we I'll are the, the super, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the, the immigrants are like subhumans, yeah? Exactly. And they want to take your car away. He's got a nice car, he worked for it, and they just want to steal his car, and they say, well, you owe us money, or, you know, it's a, it's a nice car with 160 horsepowers, he worked for it. It's his car. They're just trying to steal it. Yes. That's, um, yeah. So you want to ask people to contact you? Uh, can, can, can you give your phone number and, and email address? Oh, I'll put it in the link so, yes, you, I have so a we get organized. I YouTube channel also, but uh, I didn't use it uh, that much because I'm very, very uh, busy with uh, uh, the um, processes, the... the Juridical processes, yeah. processes. Uh, and uh, well, yeah. If I don't react, uh, they they take everything uh, they can get. So yeah, it's just terror. Uh, yes, yes. So the, pol the police they, already they, came. They know. They put me uh, knowingly in this situation where I'm defenseless and yeah. uh, I have no money to pay any any lawyer, even knowing that no lawyer is allowed to help uh, people in this situation. Uh, this is uh, the, the lawyer lobby, which has a, a huge influence in the politics, because there are uh, a lot of uh, lawyers in politics. Yes. So this is uh, a system, a closed system, uh, they use to enrich themselves and take money and possessions away from private people, from the private economy, to the communist system. Mm -hmm. I, I consider it a communist system. So your name is? My name is Gabriel Morales. Uh, the YouTube channel is uh, with the name, uh, with the same name. Gabriel Morales, yeah. But there is not much to see, so I mm. I don't uh, expect you to, yeah. to. And you live in Switzerland. In I live in Switzerland in Solothurn. Yeah. So anybody, even in Switzerland here, 
who has the same problems, the you know Swiss terror of the authorities, uh, contact Mr. Morales here, and uh, yeah. we have to be together. You know, yeah. alone with with they just crush us. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're Swiss, uh, so uh, show that uh, Switzerland is free. Show me this freedom you always talk about. Let's let's do something. <laughs> Mein Name ist, ist Regina Loy, ich bin die Frau von John Ross. Wir haben gemeinsam drei Kinder. Ich arbeite als Krankenschwester und als Naturheilpraktikerin. Und ich versuche in ein paar Sätzen diese Zeit zusammenzufassen, die Zeit von 15 Jahren. Also, seit 15 Jahren. Zu Beginn dieser Zeit machten wir rasch die Erfahrung, dass jemand wie mein Mann ohne Papiere keine Rechte hat. Ob schon damals die Behörden, die Gemeinde wusste, dass sich schon Ross bei mir aufhaltete, musste ich einen Buße zahlen wegen illegaler Beherbergung. Als mein Mann unsere gemeinsamen Kinder anerkennen wollte, mussten wir eine Vaterschaftsklage machen. Auch heiraten konnten wir nicht ohne Papiere. Da die Liebe nicht ausreicht, in den Augen der Gesellschaft und der Bund der Ehe einzugehen. Er wurde in all den Jahren immer wieder wegen den fehlenden Papieren bestraft, obwohl das kaum zu glauben ist. Niemand wusste, wie er zu einer Aufenthaltsbewilligung kommen könnte, bis wir dann einen Anwalt bezahlt bekamen und er dies nur in knapp drei Wochen äh, zustande brachte, dass er eine Aufenthaltsbewilligung bekam. Und was war mit all den Jahren zuvor? Die Integration meines Mannes wurde alle mögliche und unmögliche Steine in den Weg gestellt, anstelle alles daran zu setzen, in ihn, wie fern er in dieser Gesellschaft Hilfe braucht für die Integration, wurde mehr Zeit und Geld investiert, dagegen zu arbeiten. Die Zeit vor Jahren, als er für circa zehn Monate in Haft war, konnte ich klar zusehen, wie es ihm immer schlechter ging. Ich ließ keine Besuchszeit aus, versuchte ihm mit Liebe beizustehen. Mein Mann ist kein Krimineller, das weiß ich. Denn ich wäre nicht all die Jahre zu ihm gestanden, wenn dies der Fall wäre. Die Zeit ließ dennoch seine Spuren, denn er musste viel von seiner Zeit und Energie in die Aufgaben setzen, wo er versuchte, versucht, den hingeworfenen Steinen auszuweichen. Nach wie vor. Nach, nach all den Jahren musste er seine Energie wiederfinden, legte viel Liebe in den Versuch, uns als Familie gerecht zu werden. Wir machten gemeinsam unsere Gedanken, was unseren Kindern gut tut und was schlecht. Die letzte Welle, meinen Mann etwas anhängen zu können, geschah, als wir, eine Polizei, als wir in eine Polizeikontrolle kamen. Mein Mann war höflich gegenüber den Beamten, versuchte ein Gespräch mit ihnen zu, zu führen, doch wollte diese dies nicht. Auch die Fragen, die mein Mann ihnen stellte, fanden sie lästig. Auf einmal kippte die Stimmung der Polizisten. Das geschah, als wir gut 20 Minuten im Auto gewartet hatten, mit Kindern wohlgemerkt. Wir waren alle sehr geduldig und warteten in unserem Auto. Als der Polizist wieder aus seinem Auto ausgestiegen ist, kam er zu uns, gab mir die Papiere und wollte die Kamera von meinem Mann ergreifen. Der Polizist wurde handgreiflich, weil er nicht wollte, dass schon dies gefilmt hatte. Über drei Jahre zog sich, in dieser Geschichte, zog sich nun diese Geschichte hin, bis nun nach allen Suchen der Behörden 20 Tage Haft bestimmen wurde. Sind es dann nur 20 Tage oder nur ein Versuch, daraus mehr zu machen? Dies lässt, löst für uns als Familie viel Stress aus. Das Vertrauen zum System wäre hier gefragt, doch bezüglich schon ist dies auf brüchigem Fundament gebaut. Ich gebe und gab alles für schon, einfach in Liebe. Aber reicht nun die Liebe aus, um unsere Familie beisammen zu halten? Oder ist der Druck von außen zu groß? Dies nun meine Worte.
Ja, also du kannst bestätigen, dass der Polizist gelogen hat. Du warst ja dabei an diesem Tag. Ja. War der aggressiv? Ja, er wurde ja, er wurde ja handgreiflich. Ja, also das war dann um, äh, äh, am 8. April 2011 um 11.40 Uhr in Burgdorf. Kannst du das bestätigen? Ja, war ja dabei. Genau. Äh, ist er einfach so ins Auto gegangen, ohne etwas zu fragen, total aggressiv? Äh. Ja, er wollte ja die Kamera wieder von dir, wollte sie Wäsche laufen. Ja, das war ja vorher schon, ist einfach im Auto gegangen, vorher schon, hm. um irgendwie eine Wasserspritzpistole von den Kindern zu holen, weißt du noch? Ja. Ähm, wie lange schätzt du, haben sie uns da verhaftet gehabt? Ne? Wir konnten ja nicht weg, ganze Familie verhaftet, du, war ja, du warst ja hochschwanger. Du musst es im Auto, in einem total heißen Auto ausharren. Wie lange denkst du, das Ganze hat, hat das Ganze gedauert? Ich habe vorhin gesagt, 20 Minuten. Nein, du hast gesagt, er war 20 Minuten im Auto. Ich frage ah, dir das Ganze. Ja, vielleicht beinahe eine dreiviertel Stunde, eine Stunde. So. Ja, das würde ich auch sagen. Ähm, war es dir deutlich, dass er seine Befehle am Telefon bekommen hat? Hat es einen Persönlichkeitswechsel gegeben äh, vor dem Telefongespräch im Auto im Vergleich zu nachher? Wie gesagt, es war die Situation, die Behörden waren gekippt und war völlig anders. Also hat er seine Stimmung. Befehle bekommen am Telefon? Kann man daraus ziehen, ja. Mhm. Äh, denkst du, das könnte politisch sein, wegen der, der SVP, die hier an der Macht ist? Äh, oder wieso denkst du, dass er solche derartige Befehle bekommen hat? Ich meine, es ist keine Tatsache, aber es ist interessant. Ja, also da müssten wir ein wenig weiter ausholen, ja, wo ich jetzt stimmt. gar nicht alles besprechen nee, möchte. Darum geht das nicht. Hast du Angst dafür, dass die unsere ganze Familie kaputt machen? Ich meine, wir sind 15 Jahre zusammen. Bei mir geht der ganze Terror hier 17 Jahre. Hast du Angst dafür? Was sind die Auswirkungen auf den Kinder? Müssen sie den Terror auch miterleben? Ich meine, der Kilian, haben sie zweimal mit mir verhaftet, ohne irgendwelchen Grund. Wie siehst du das? Ich denke schon, sie erleben diese Gesellschaft auf ganz andere Art und Weise als ihre Schulkameraden, die dies alles nicht erlebt haben. Und wir versuchen es auch, du wie ich, versuchen es, diese, diesen wie du sagst, diesen Terror, diesen Angriff auch von ihnen fernzuhalten, aber dies geschieht natürlich nicht, ist nicht wirklich möglich. Wie benehme, wie, ben, wie benehme ich mich unter den ganzen Terror? Ich meine... Habe ich vorhin geschildert, du versuchst immer noch viel Liebe und Verständnis uns als Familie gegenüber. Also unter diesem unmöglichen Terror bin ich eigentlich noch ruhig und geduldig und... Ja, weil sonst ging es ja gar nicht. Okay. Äh, möchtest du auch um Hilfe fragen, dass das mal aufhört für deine Familie, für die Kinder, an die internationale Gesellschaft? Ich denke, die Hoffnung stirbt wirklich zuletzt, wie man so schön sagt. Aber ich setze nicht sehr viel Hoffnung in eine Kamera, in, eine, in ein Video. Aber ich wäre sehr dankbar, wenn, es Hilfe, wenn Hilfe kommen könnte. Es ist ja tragisch, dass man so weit kommen muss, dass man gezwungen ist, um sich da auf dem Internet dazu äh, bereitzustellen und für alle sichtbar. Und, äh, Was das angeht, weißt du ja meine Einstellung und mhm. bin ich sehr nüchtern. Weil einfach das System hier ein Terrorsystem ist und, und nicht äh, funktioniert. Ne? Ja. ja. Wirst du sonst noch etwas sagen? Nein, habe ich zusammengefasst. Ich mag es lieber kurz und bündig. Hier ist mein jüngerer Sohn, der Rivan. Wie hast du das, du warst ja dabei an diesem Tag, am 8. April 2011 um 11.40 Uhr. War der Polizist aggressiv? Ja, sehr. Du, du saß ja im Auto, du hast gesehen, wie der, der hat dich weggeschubst im Auto, um da irgendwie eine Wasserspritzpistole von dir zu holen, oder? Äh, ja. Hat er mich rumgeschubst? Äh, mehrmals. Und äh, wie war ich? Wie habe ich mich verhalten? Ganz freundlich. Ja, und ähm, hast du dadurch noch Vertrauen in der Polizei und die ganzen Behörden hier? Kein bisschen. Mhm, das ist ja tragisch. Mhm. Okay.
Also das hier ist Kilian, der ist äh, mein Sohn, der ist 14 Jahre alt, der war auch dabei an diesem Tag vom 8. April 2011 um 11.40 Uhr mit dieser verlogenen Polizisten, der Kunz, Erika Kunz und Hans-Rudolf Kühni. Äh, wie hast du das erlebt diesen Tag? Äh, bist du auch verhaftet worden? Ähm, ja, die ganze Familie. Ja. ja, wie lange hast du ungefähr im Auto müssen ausharren? Das war ganz heiß, ne? Mami war schwanger ja. und so. Circa 40 Minuten. Mhm. Stimmt, ja. ja. Äh, du hast auch gesehen, wie der Polizist äh, am Telefon war im Auto, ne? Ja, das stimmt. Wie lange hat es gedauert, dass er im Auto war? Zwischen 20 und eine halbe Stunde, mhm. muss ich sagen. Ja. Ist er, wie hat er sich nachher verhalten im Vergleich vorher und nachher, Telefon, nach dem Telefongespräch? Er wusste, was er zu tun hatte. Wie ist, wie, aber, ja genau, sehr gut, aber wie ist er geworden? War der normal im Vergleich zu vorher und nachher oder ist er irgendwie, war der anders? Ja, ähm, er wohl, ja, ist ziemlich anders, ja. Ziemlich. Wie denn? Ähm, eben wie ich gesagt habe, ähm, er wusste, was er zu tun hat. Naja, okay. Ja, war der Polizist aggressiv? Extrem. Ja. Was hat er denn gemacht genau? Ähm, er hat meinem Vater die Kamera aus der Hand geschlagen und gedroht und so weiter. Also mhm. Hat er mich gedroht. rumgeschubst? Ja, ziemlich. Mhm. Wie war ich? War ich? Wie war ich ihm gegenüber? Ähm, nicht, gar nicht aggressiv, wie, wie man sagt, gar nicht. Habe ich Sie gesagt zu ihm? Ja. Hand geschüttelt? Ja, alles ja. höflich. Und ähm, hat er dich auch weggeschubst, als du im Auto saßt und er hat einfach, ist einfach im Auto gesprungen, hat etwas gesucht, eine Wasserspritzpistole? Ja, das schon, aber ich ging dann schon aus dem Auto. No. Ja. Ähm, ja, hast du noch Vertrauen in die Polizei, Schweizer Polizei, nachdem du das hier erlebt hast? Überhaupt nicht, gar nicht. Und das ist traurig. Also, sie haben gelogen, ne? Ziemlich. Ähm, das war nicht das erste Mal, also die haben uns noch ein zweites Mal verhaftet. Kannst du da etwas an der Tankstelle, kannst du da etwas drüber sagen? Ja, ähm, sie laufen mit einem Foto von meinem Vater rum und ja, Sie wollen meinen Ausweis sehen, ähm, den Ausweis von meinem Vater auch und haben die Rucksäcke durchsucht und so weiter. Ja, alles an Verbrechen, wie ich so sagen kann. Ja, weißt du noch, wann das war? Ähm, ich glaube Ende Dezember 2011. Mhm. 28. kann ja. das sein? Ja, ja. ja. Glaub, und Gab es irgendwelche Grund, uns zu verhaften, oder? Nein, fällt mir nicht ein, nee. mhm. gar nichts. Ja. Halt am Himmel. Ja. Wie äh, erlebst du äh, den ganzen Terror, oder äh, wie du das schon dein ganzes Leben hier wegen, äh, das hier erleben musst, wie, wie erlebst du das so? Ja, ähm, es schon zum ersten Mal. Ein Stress, wenn ich es auch so sagen kann. Ich kann nicht, äh, mit meinem Vater kann ich nicht raus und so weiter, ja. Das ist ziemlich an Stress, ja. Stimmt. Okay, wirst du sonst noch etwas sagen? Nee, da wird mir jetzt nichts anfallen. In kurzer mhm. Zeit, ja. Okay. Okay. Die Schweiz ist eine Faschistendiktatur, verknüpft mit der Schweizer Finanzmafia und politisch geführt von extrem rechten Nazi-Parteien im Parlament, wo die Schweizer Nazi-Polizei organisiert und mit Rückendeckung der Schweizer Nazi-Justiz auf Befehl von Höher einfach Sachen zusammenlügt, um Ausländer in den Knast zu kriegen um eben künstlich die Ausländerkriminalstatistiken in die Höhe zu lügen, um im Parlament mehr Gesetze gegen Ausländer, Immigranten, andere Rassen 
und Andersdenkende zu veranlassen. Und genau das taten am 8. April 2011 zwei korrupte Schweizer Polizisten mit Namen Hans Rudolf Küni, der Gott sei Dank zwei Monate später erschossen wurde wegen seines gewalttätiges Profil und Erika Kunz. Diese Kunz und Küni haben auf Befehl bewusst gelogen, um mich schon Ross wieder das kriminelle Muster für Ausländer anzuhängen. Und meine Frau und Kinder haben alles mit ansehen müssen, wie Küni mich schlug, rumschubste und anschrie, was man deutlich in Film sehen kann. Ja, hier sieht man ja, wie, wie er seine Hand ausstreckt, ne? um mich zu schlagen, um die Kamera aus der Hand zu schlagen. Und äh, ja, das wollen die Schweizer, dieses Beweis wollen sie weghaben. Und dafür muss meine ganze Familie leiden. Dreieinhalb Jahre Hausarrest, wegen das hier. Es ist doch deutlich, schaut doch zu. Und ohne etwas zurückzutun, zurückzutun, habe ich alles mal wieder einstecken müssen, wie weitere Schweizer Angriffe das hier bestätigen. Die korrupte Schweizer Faschistenjustiz versucht mich damit auf Mafia-Art zu erpressen. Dass wenn ich die Videobeweise nicht runterhole von YouTube, sie mich dann noch mehr Gefängnisstrafe und Schweizer Terror an mich und meine Familie zukommen lassen werden. Was diese Schweizer Justizverbrecher obendrauf sogar noch schwarz auf weiß in ihren Drohbriefe mir zukommen lassen, was ich hier als Beweis gefilmt habe, und dazu lege. Es ist schon eine Schande, dass man sich auf die Transparenz des YouTube zurückgreifen muss und, si und sich als ganze Familie in aller Öffentlichkeit wie an dem Pranger oder wie im Schaufenster präsentieren muss, weil die Schweizer Justiz und dazugehörende Polizei total korrumpiert sind. Und die Staatsmacht unter politischem Druck zu Instrument des langjährigen Terrors missbraucht wird. Meine Frau ist Krankenschwester und Naturheilpraktikerin. Und sie hilft ihren Mitmenschen innerhalb und neben ihrer Berufstätigkeit. Und sie spricht aus Überzeugung hinaus immer die Wahrheit. Und meine Kinder sind aufrecht und dazu erzogen worden, Prinzipien wie Ehrlichkeit und Respekt zu würdigen. Ganz im Gegenteil zu diesen zwei kriminellen Schweizer Lügenpolizisten, Kunz und Kühni und ihre korrupte Vorgesetzten. Als Ausländer in der Schweiz weiß man, dass man vor einem Schweizer Gericht keine Gerechtigkeit widerfahren wird. Schlimmer noch, die werden dich provozieren, erniedrigen und deine Worte verdrehen, um einen noch mehr anhängen zu können. Und eben das habe ich schon mehrmals erlebt von dem Schweizer Gericht. Also wieso überhaupt noch zu einer Schweizer Gerichtsverhandlung gehen, wenn die sich weder an die internationalen Gesetze noch an die eigenen Gesetze halten und die Schweizer Gerichte bloß lügen und betrügen, was das Zeug hält. Und zu den internationalen Gesetzen gehört eben, dass wenn ich einen Film veröffentliche, worin ich übrigens korrekt die Wahrheit über geschichtliche Ereignisse bespreche, dann hat diese korrupte Schweizer Justiz überhaupt keine Gerichtsbarkeit darüber. Weil ich meine Filme unter die Gesetze der Vereinigten Staaten bei YouTube in San Bruno, Kalifornien unter das First Amendment veröffentlicht habe und nicht in der Schweiz. Und dieses per Gesetz unmöglich unter die Jurisdiktion der Schweiz fallen kann, weil ich ja gar nichts in, die Schwe in der Schweiz veröffentlicht habe, also gar nichts. Wenn Schweizer ehrlich wären und sich an den internationalen Spielregeln halten würden, dann müssten sie mich vor einem US-Gericht verklagen, da meine Veröffentlichungen stattgefunden haben, real geworden sind und das Prozess der Veröffentlichung zu Stand gekommen ist. Die Stand der Dinge in der Schweiz ist derartig entartet, dass du dich hier schlagen, anschreien, terrorisieren und erniedrigen und rumschubsen machen lassen musst von korrupten, aggressiven Schweizer Polizisten, 
die Sachen zusammenlögen und dass du darauf lieber nichts mehr darüber sagen darfst oder dich auf irgendwelche Art äußern darüber, weil es sonst noch mehr Gefängnisstrafe gibt in der Schweizer Faschistendiktatur. Und kurz darauf schickten sie mich oben darauf noch eine Antiterroreinheit, um mich auf Mafiaart einzuschüchtern. Drei Pistolen auf meinem Kopf, überall bewaffnete Maskerte, Typen, Handschellen, Fußschellen, ein Band über meine Augen wie in einer CIA-Entführung, Morddrohungen, Schreie und so weiter. Und warum? Erstens, weil ich ein unerwünschter Ausländer bin, ohne Geld. Zweitens, wegen meiner historischen Dokumentars auf YouTube. Und drittens, weil ich die Schweizer Gesetze des Schweigens verbrochen habe und in der österreichischen Kronenzeitung bewiesen habe, wie der Wolfgang Umvogel in einem Schweizer Foltergefängnis in nur zwei Wochen Zeit geselbstmordet wurde. So wie Uwe Barschel, auch in der Schweiz, ne? Und auch wegen Poli Politikfinanzen. Da ist dann die traurige Geschichte des Mordes an Uwe Barschel in zwei Wochen Zeit in ein Schweizer Gefängnis. Und darüber darf man in der Schweiz nicht reden, weil dann wird es sehr gefährlich. Und hier steht auch da mein Name hier. Und dass der mit O2T Falter ist der Österreich umgebracht worden. Wegen Steuerdaten, wegen Steuerhinterziehung in der Schweiz. Und genauso wie Uwe Barschel und viele anderen, sobald es um große Finanzen geht hier in der Schweiz, dann, ja, dann geht es nicht lange mehr. Ne? Mit Kabel erhängt. Ist auch ein lebenslustiger Mann hier. Und, äh, ja, dann drücken Sie halt schnell Pause, dann können Sie es lesen. Und das hier ist der Art vom Folter, der in Schweizer Gefängnissen praktiziert wird, vor allem auch Ausländer. Die Liste des Gestorbenen ist sehr lang. Und dieses Gefängnis ist irgendwann geöffnet worden wegen die deutsche RAF in den 80er Jahren. Schön alles versteckt, so wie die Schweizer das gern machen. Und da noch einige Beweisen in der Zeitung. Darüber, wie hier Menschen zu Tode gefoltert werden. Und da, wie es grün ist, da steht auch drin, dass keine Sauerstoff vorhanden. Und das ist natürlich, das hat der Schweizer natürlich gern, ne? Das ist versteckt, so wie Uwe Barschel, man kommt niemand, niemand wird rausfinden, wie es gelaufen ist, hinter den Kulissen, unter dem Teppich, totale Schweizer Art, ne? Hier auch, am späten Nachmittag erinnert das Klima im zweiten Stock an ein Treibhaus und dazu sind die meisten Inhaftierten sind unschuldig. Die sitzen da drin, total basiert auf Schweizer Lügen der Schweizer Justiz. Ich finde im Vergleich die französische Polizei als sehr korrekt, respektvoll und menschlich, die vor allem von der französischen Justiz und Politik kontrolliert werden. Im totalen Gegensatz im Vergleich zu der Schweizer Lügenpolizei. Ich habe seit 17 Jahren unter totalem Schweizer Faschistenterror leben müssen, wo sie mich als Ausländerkriminelle abgestempelt haben, was ich keineswegs bin. Ich habe kein Einkommen, kein Arbeitserlaubnis gehabt, nie sozial bekommen, lebe unter dem Ex Existenzminimum und wenn ich krank bin, muss ich drei Tage trampen nach Frankreich, um mich behandeln zu lassen. 
Er hätte gern als Historiker auf einer Universität arbeiten wollen, aber weil die Schweizer alles daran getan haben, meine Integration zu verunmöglichen, ist es leider dazu nicht gekommen. Stattdessen muss ich hier den Behördenterror hinhalten. Und hier kann man in der Zeitung lesen, wie mehr als 10.000 Asylanten verschwunden sind. Und höchstwahrscheinlich sind sie eingeäschert worden, so wie in Auschwitz, was auch eine Schweizer Idee war. Und in dieser Film sind auch alle Beweise, wie die Schweiz auf alle Führungspositionen Auschwitz kontrolliert, die Verantwortung darüber hatten und alles finanziert haben. Es waren keine Deutsche mal, es waren alle Schweizer. Das ist die Schweiz, eine organisierte Verbrecherbande mit einem Land. Und ich sage euch Schweizer und Schweizerinnen, dass meine Filme bleiben werden, trotz eurer Zensurmaßnahmen, Zensurerpressungen und weitere bekannte mafiosen Methoden. Und irgendwann werden meine Filme millionenfach angeschaut werden und wird die Welt dadurch erfahren, was für Großverbrecher ihr Schweizer und Schweizerinnen in Wirklichkeit seid hinter eurer Neutralitätsschwindelfassade. Und hier in diesem Film in, auf Englisch habe ich nochmal festgelegt und bestätigt äh, in meiner Aussage, dass ich niemals äh, jemand äh, angreifen oder verletzen würde und äh, nie mich selber umbringen würde und keine Depression habe falls sie das trotzdem machen werden, da die Behörden. Und übrigens, weil so viele Ausländer in Schweizer Gefängnissen und Folteranstalten umkommen, verschwinden sowie 10.000 Asylanten oder geselbstmordet werden, so wie Wolfgang Umvogel und viele anderen, möchte ich Sean Ross nochmals bestätigen, dass ich mich niemals umbringen würde, keine Depressionen habe, noch sonst psychische Beistand brauche, keine Medikamente nehme und niemand anders auf irgendeine Art verletzen werde. Meine Glaub mein Glauben und Instrumente, die ich mir bediene, sind Geduld, Transparenz, Ehrlichkeit und eine eiserne Disziplin, ganz im Gegensatz zum allgemeinen und weit verbreitete, verbreiteten Schweizer Betrug mit all ihren total entartenden Facetten, was sich nur mit einem Parasiten vergleichen lässt. Da, hier sind die offizielle äh, Papier der Behörden. Das waren die zwei Polizisten, die uns da belagert haben, Sachen zusammengelogen. Da Erika Kunz, die lebt noch. Und dann der hier, nein, der hat seine Strafe bekommen, der ist tot. Gott sei Dank, der kann keine Menschen mehr, der kann, der kann nicht mehr lügen und keine Menschen mehr Leid zubringen. Das war ein höchst korrupter, aggressiver Polizist. Auf Befehl haben sie einfach Sachen zusammengelogen, um mich im Knast zu kriegen, wegen meiner YouTube-Filme. Da, das sind da die Lügen da. Das ist von Kühni. Höchst aggressiver Polizist. Darum ist er auch tot. Der junge Mann hatte Angst bekommen und hat ihn erschossen. Ähm... Man wird geschlagen von der Polizei hier und die lügen Sachen zusammen, um dich äh, im Knast zu kriegen, auf Befehl, was da seinen Befehl im Auto bekommen. Und wenn man dann noch seinen Mund darüber aufmacht und sagt, hey, das geht ja nicht, das stimmt nicht. Naja, dann kommst du nochmal vor den Gericht hier, wo ich nicht gegangen bin, weil ich anerkenne da das Schweizer Nazi-Gericht nicht mehr mehr. Ja, dann gehst du in den Knast, wenn du noch dich als Ausländer das die Frechheit hast, um dich deinen Mund darüber aufzumachen oder so, ne? Unglaublich.
Also da muss alles hinnehmen, Mund zuhalten, wie eine, eine Diktatur. Da, das habe ich noch darüber geschrieben. Einige Sachen noch. Wie es wirklich ging. Und meine Frau und Kinder waren dabei, die haben ja alles gesehen. Das ist alles gelogen. Das ist alles Politik. Und hier regiert ja die Schweizer Nazi-Partei. Und dabei, wenn ich einen Film veröffentliche, dann habe ich das unter die amerikanische, ich veröffentliche das in Amerika, da hat die Schweizer Justiz absolut keine Befügtheit darüber. Ich habe es unter die Gesetze Amerikas veröffentlicht und nichts Illegales gesagt. Da, das heißt Knast, ne? Vollzugsverfügung, nur wegen YouTube-Filme. Wenn man sagt, der Polizist hat mich geschlagen, hat gelogen, dann gehst du im Knast hier. Das darfst du nicht sagen in der Schweiz, muss alles zulassen hier. Ja, und das ist das Foltergefängnis, wo sich auch Wolfgang Umfolger, der wegen den Bankdaten der Österreicher, die haben sie da ermordet. Und ganz viele Ausländer da ermordet. Und mich haben sie auch da gefoltert, mal. Ein Sauerstoffentzug. Und jetzt stecken sie mich wieder da drin. Ja. Die Schweizer SVP-Nazi-Partei, ja, die brauchen einfach ausländische Verbrecher, die keine Verbrecher sind. Um die Kriminalstatistiken künstlich zu erhöhen und nachher gehen sie zum Bundeshaus, in der Regierung und sagen, ja, die Ausländer, die sind so schlimm und so kriminell und so. Und ja, wir brauchen mehr Gefängnisse, mehr Polizei, wir müssen all die Ausländer auch schaffen und so. Da arbeiten sie denn da, da an die Schweizer. Ne? Es ist ein Faschistenstaat, die haben auch den Zweiten Weltkrieg finanziert. Der Himmler war ein ethnischer Schweizer, der Mengele war ein ethnischer Schweizer, alles Alemann an der Schweizer Grenze geboren, das waren keine Deutsche. Der Obergruppenführer, Reichsminister äh, Leonardo Conti war ein Schweizer, man nannte ihn auch der, der Schweizer Sadist. Und Ernst Rüden, Hitlers Mastermind, war ein Schweizer. Und. Äh, auch Karl Jäger von den Einsatzgruppen, alle Schweizer. Der Hitler wurde auch in der Schweiz finanziert von General Ulrich Welle, der mit äh, der Schweizer Aristokratie von Bismarck rein geheiratet war. Wer ja nichts gesehen im Knast. Und was fällt auf hier? Also wenn ich hier das Logo schaue, das Berner Wappen, was macht dann die Krone da? Regiert hier trotzdem der Adel, also obwohl die Schweizer sagen, ja wir haben ja direkte Demokratie. Was macht dann eine Krone da, wenn das Volk so genannt regieren sollte? Naja, das hat Johannes ja gesehen in der Offenbarung. Und das Tier hatte sieben Köpfe und zehn Hörner. Die Schweizer haben zehn, sieben Bundesräte oder sieben Präsidenten, die zehn Ministerien unter sich verteilen. Und das ist der Bär, das Biest, was Johannes gesehen hat, der auch den Zweiten Weltkrieg gegen die Deutschen, gegen Deutschland auch, gegen Europa finanziert haben. Und die Templer waren ja Adlige, das waren keine Mönche. Auf jedem Brief steht es hier. Ja, wenn das Volk ja regieren sollte. Und das sind die Behörden, die ja regieren. Warum musst du deine Kronen da drauf? Ja, wach doch auf. Das ist die alte Weltordnung, die noch immer jetzt die neue wird, das feudale System der Adlige, die noch immer jetzt regieren in der neuen Weltordnung. Hat sich wesentlich nichts für verändert. Und das ist dann der Schweizer Anwalt der nichts macht. Ja.
Gerade das wegen der Enten schießen. Ich gehe auch nicht mal da dahin, das bringt sowieso nichts. Da, wegen meine YouTube-Filme. Gehst im Knast. Musste hier Schlaß schlagen lassen, terrorisieren lassen, aber dann nochmal hier. Die Schweiz ist eine Diktatur, gehüllt in feine Milchschokolade. Und immer Geld und Gold, das wollen die Schweizer. Die klauen Geld über die ganze Welt und wollen noch mehr Geld. Ich habe kein Geld. Die haben mich nicht mal eine Arbeitsbewegung gegeben hier. Wieso soll ich Geld haben? Also da, Montag, 10. November 2014, 9 Uhr, regional Folter, Gefängnis in Bern. Ja, gehst im Knast wegen YouTube-Filmen. Ich habe nichts geschimpft, ich habe geschichtliche Fakten zusammengebracht und ich habe gesagt, dass es nicht gut ist, aber es der Polizist macht, dass er gelogen hat. Oder ich bezahle 1300 Schweizer Franken, die ich nicht habe. Und um es einfach zu machen, macht der Schweizer Mafia noch einen Einzahlungsschein dabei.